Listen to this train. Notice how the sound of its whistle changes. Higher as it comes toward us, but lower as it passes. About 100 years ago, a young scientist also noticed this change. He wondered why the sound suddenly changed as the train went by. The scientist, Christian Doppler, found the answer. An answer that is today an important tool of science. To understand it, let's watch this demonstration. Scientists tell us that sound travels through the air in waves, much like the waves in water. A small vibrator is mounted on wheels above a glass tank. Attached to the vibrator is a wire that just touches the water in the tank, creating small waves. If we shine a bright light down through the tank, the shadows that are formed will clearly show the patterns and movements of these waves. The number of waves moving by any point in one second is called the wave frequency. If the vibrating wire is slowed down, what happens to the waves? They don't travel any slower, but there are fewer of them, and they are farther apart. So the wave frequency is lower. If the vibrator is speeded up, the waves don't travel any faster, but there are more waves and they are closer together. Now the wave frequency is higher. We'll roll the vibrator to one end of the tank and start it moving toward the opposite end. With the vibrator at a steady frequency, watch the waves. Those ahead of the moving vibrator become crowded together into a higher frequency. As the vibrator returns, the waves behind are spread out. With fewer waves, the result is a lower frequency. But the speed at which the waves travel does not change. Because sound also travels in waves, sound waves from this horn will behave in much the same way that water waves do. The frequency of the sound waves that reach our ear determines the pitch of the sound we hear, whether it is a high or a low sound. The closer together the waves are, the higher their frequency, and the higher the pitch of the sound. The farther apart they are, the lower the frequency, and the lower the pitch of the sound. But if the source of the sound, the horn, moves toward the ear, the waves are crowded together. Their frequency becomes higher, and so the sound we hear becomes higher. If the source moves away, the sound waves are spread out. Their lower frequency causes us to hear them as a lower sound. It was this change in the frequency of sound waves from a moving train that Christian Doppler heard and explained. It is now known as 
the Doppler effect. As we have seen, this effect is visible in water waves. It can be heard in sound waves. It can also be seen in light, because light also travels in waves. If we shine light through a prism, the light waves are spread out into a band of colors called a spectrum. Each color in the spectrum is produced by light waves of a different frequency. Red on the right is the lowest frequency our eyes can see. Violet on the left is the highest frequency our eyes can see. Green is a frequency in the middle. Suppose a green light could be mounted on an imaginary spaceship moving through space at nearly the speed of light. The light waves produced would behave just as the water and sound waves did. Those ahead of the rocket would be crowded together into a higher frequency toward the violet end of the spectrum. So to an observer on a planet ahead of the rocket ship, the green light would appear violet. At the same time, the light waves behind the rocket would be spread out into a lower frequency toward the red end of the spectrum. So to an observer on a planet behind the rocket ship, the green light would appear red. For scientists studying the stars, the Doppler effect is an important tool. Our sun is really a star. Sunlight produces a spectrum that is crossed by thousands of fine lines. Only a few of the lines are shown in this drawing. Here's another spectrum made with sunlight. Notice that the lines appear slightly closer to the violet. This indicates a shift in the frequency, and so in the color, of the light. The bottom spectrum was made with light from only one edge of the sun. But here is a spectrum from the other opposite edge of the sun. Now the lines are shifted toward the red. Since light from this edge of the sun is shifted toward the violet, this side of the sun must be moving toward us, crowding its light waves into a higher frequency. The light from this edge of the sun is shifted toward the red. So this side must be moving away from us, spreading out its light waves into a lower frequency. If the left side of the sun is moving toward us, and the right side is moving away from us, the sun must be turning or rotating much as our Earth does. But what about other stars? What can the Doppler effect tell us about them? These very distant stars are in a group called Virgo. If a spectrum made with light from Virgo is compared with one from the sun, the lines show a frequency shift toward the red. Most of the stars we can see also show a red shift. This seems to indicate that the stars are moving away from us. The Doppler effect in starlight causes many astronomers to believe that the universe may be illustrated with an expanding balloon. The spot represent stars. The stars seem to be rushing through space at thousands of miles a second, moving farther and farther away from each other.
Because Christian Doppler was curious about the sound made by a moving train, astronomers today have an important tool, a tool that is helping them learn much about the stars and about the nature of the universe itself.